Well, hi folks. For this trip, I'm heading to the northwest of Scotland to photograph and summit the iconic hill Chauvin. Now, this is actually my third attempt at summiting this hill, and I'll give you a brief history on the previous two fails. This footage was taken in April 2018 when myself and my mate Sean canoed along Lough Yeti with the intent of climbing Chauvin. But as you're about to find out, the weather took a turn for the worst and we had to abandon the full mission. The following morning we woke up and were paddling directly into a headwind. You can see the streaks in the direction that the wind was blowing and that was the direction that we were paddling in. So we had to leave the canoe and anything we couldn't carry and set off on foot, walking the five miles back to the car across some pretty treacherous terrain. So two weeks later we went back and retrieved the canoe and luckily it was still intact with all our belongings but we never gave ourselves enough time to climb Chauvin. Such a good feeling. Yeah, so mission aborted on both of those trips. <laughs> um, we did however get some lovely images, especially at night it was very clear and we got some lovely astro shots. So that brings me to this trip where myself and my brother-in-law and shooting partner Ross went up to conquer my nemesis and man it was well worth the wait. The conditions we got were incredible and I've come away with one absolute belter of an image that I've been dying to share with everyone. Anyway, without further ado, let's get into this video. <laughs> Ross and I left central Scotland around 11ish on the Sunday and headed to Ascent. It took us approximately 5 hours to get there, stopped off for some supplies and also to take some video footage of the locals. Before long we reached the car park at the Ascent Foundation headquarters next to Glen Canish Lodge and we got suited and booted and started the 3 km hike along the trail to the Bothy. The views open up pretty quickly but just as quick as the views opened up darkness fell and before long we had the head torches out and we're walking along in darkness. A few of the locals were stalking us, they followed us for most of the trail I'm not sure if it was the same deer we filmed earlier from the roadside. They might have been chasing us to sign a model release for them before we released this content. <laughs> An hour later we arrived at the Bothy, got our sleeping areas set up, got filled up with some food before settling down for the night. Dinner is served. Pot and trust trusty old pot and Got a wee heat and then we're going to get an early night. Well, Ross may have won the darts, but he certainly celebrates like a little girl. <laughs> I spent an hour or so shooting some time lapse, and you can see how bright the moon was. It was nearly a full moon, it was illuminating all the clouds and parts of the landscape at times. It was absolutely spectacular. So we hiked from the Bothy to the top of Chauvin in the dark and found a nice sheltered area out the road of the very strong winds and witnessed one of the best sunrises that I've ever seen. Well that's us at the top of Chauvin. Absolutely incredible sunrise, just about to kick off I think. Fingers crossed it's looking promising. Uh, myself and Ross are just sitting on this rather precarious looking cliff. <laughs> Try to get a bit of shelter from the wind, it is very very windy, it was forecast for 85 mile an hour winds so um, we've got a bit of shelter behind us, a couple of rocks here but it is still blowing a gale, very cold but man this is absolutely insane honestly, it's up there with one of the best views I've seen on a hill, it's absolutely incredible, third time lucky, <laughs> brilliant, I never brought the video camera 
tripod, so I've got this balancer in my bag. Hence the reason I'm a wee bit awkward. <laughs> Hopefully it's not blown about because I can see all the grass blowing round about it. But man, absolutely incredible. Five and a half hour drive, overnight in a bothy, freezing. All worth it for this exact moment. Perfect. Oh. <laughs> In between taking pictures, I was frantically moving the video camera around, trying to get it level on my rucksack without getting blown off the cliff, which as you can see proved very challenging. As sunrise approached, we realised there was a tiny gap on the horizon, and realised it was going to be something special. As the sun rose, the conditions kept improving and getting better and better. There was sunbeams shining out through the fast moving clouds, painting certain areas of the landscape, and at certain times we would catch a glimpse of a sun star clipping the top of Sylvain, and the sunbeams were lighting up either side of the hill. It was absolutely incredible to watch. So here is the final image, it's definitely up there with one of my favourite photos I've ever captured. It certainly was one of the most breathtaking views and sunrises I've ever witnessed. So here's four images taken pre and post sunrise, just to show you the difference in light. The final image was a combination of the bottom two images. As the main subject, which obviously is the hill itself, was in shadow, I decided to keep the sun star in. This helps draw the viewer's eye straight to the mountain itself. I also love the sun rays on either side, which helps the, the main subject pop in the frame. And there's some lovely direct sunlight lighting up the foreground, which gives the image a more three-dimensional feel. I removed the lens flare and a few of the white marks that I found distracting on some of the rocks in post. But overall, I'm absolutely delighted with the image and it's definitely one that'll be hanging in my home. So we made it back to the Bothy, got our equipment packed up from the night before and got heavy rucksacks on and ventured back out in the rain and walked the three kilometres back to the van. Day one was a success and we both finished on a high. 
Now to finalise the day we headed another south back to Ullapool and went in for a quick shower at the local showers and went into the chip shop for some dinner. Now I can't recommend this chip shop highly enough. The three times I've been up I've paid it a visit and the chips are incredible, nice and crunchy. Uh, that's because they're double fried so they're probably twice as bad for you but they taste excellent. Now some people might think it's crazy driving five hours north to take a couple of pictures and drive back but this chip shop is actually so good that I've been that close to driving up five hours and buying a bag of chips and driving home. Anyway, the plan for day two was to climb Stack Polly, another iconic hill in that area. So after we finished our haggis suppers we headed north again and set our alarms getting ready to get back up at the crack of dawn and do it all again the next morning. Crossword, mate. It is now half past seven. Yeah, um, I've just spent the last half hour messing about with some extreme B roll. <laughs> Try to pass some time, it's the witching hour. Both of us are absolutely shattered and ready for our beds, but we don't want to go to sleep too early or we'll wake up in the middle of the night and then probably fall back asleep and not want to get up in the morning, half past four, so <laughs> try to stay awake for at least another hour. Try to think of something to do to pass the time. So, I've decided to do this. Well, not only did you get to see some awesome dance moves there, but you got to hear an unreleased track that I'd done 15 years ago for a band called Ultimate Buzz. The track was called On A Mission. I'm only joking, I cringe every single time I watch that bit back, but it was a good laugh. The ironic thing was, the only mission that we were on was to get to our bed and get up early to start all over again. <laughs> good morning folks. Shelf and Ross are started the hike up Stack Polly. Right from the car park it's pretty steep. And we're about to get even steeper. Not gonna lie, your legs are really heavy today. <coughs> Knackered, we never really slept that well last night. Um, Ross was up coughing quite a bit and I was snoring apparently, which kept him awake. <laughs> I don't believe him, I never heard that. <laughs> We're going to struggle on up here and see the weather's not looking that great at the moment, pretty cloudy. We may as well get up here anyway. And we're doing it. <laughs> That's us at the top of Stack Polly. Just waiting on sunrise, clouds rolled in over the summit here. Um, it's freezing cold, so we're sheltered. We found a wee bit down here, out the road of the wind. Hopefully, this cloud clears. Make a nice sunrise, we'll see. Gonna get these hands back in my gloves because my fingers are going numb holding this camera. <laughs> Catch you in a bit. So, yeah, again, we found ourselves wandering about, trying to find a composition before sunrise. I spent a bit too much time trying to tweak a composition that I thought would work. Plus, when the time came for sunrise, there was a band of cloud blocking it just on the horizon, so we were slightly disappointed. I'll show the image anyway, but as I said, I'm not 100% happy with it. Now, don't get me wrong, it's a lovely scene to look at, but compositionally I'm not happy with it. I should have probably got my long lens out and honed in on some of the more intricate details like the clouds swirling about the peaks in the background. So apart from a band of cloud blocking the sunlight coming through on the horizon and a combination of tiredness, hunger and we kept comparing yesterday's conditions which were obviously out of this world, we decided to call it a day. We had a leisurely walk back to the van and just appreciated being out in this wonderful landscape. Well that concludes this video, I hope you've enjoyed it as much as I have making it and been out and about in the field, it's been great fun. For my next trip I'm heading to the northwest of Scotland again, to a place called Torridon. I'm hoping to summit camp on the top of Ben Allegan, which I'm really looking forward to. Anyway, if you enjoyed the video, feel free to subscribe, comment, critique, 
hit the like button, all that nonsense, and I'll hopefully catch you on the summit of Ben Allegan. Cheers. <laughs>